The common frog, Rana temporaria, is a fascinating species in terms of variation in coloration and pattern. Frogs in a variety of shades of brown, cream, buff, yellow, red, could all be roughly described as normal coloration. But along with these normal variations come a variety of colour morphs. Colour morphs occur when a mutation in the animal's DNA causes it to fail to produce the normal coloration. One of the most common and well-known mutations is albinism. Albino frogs such as this one are unable to produce melanin, which is the pigment that gives them their normal dark coloration. This frog, affectionately known as Goldie, forms part of our captive breeding colony at UK Crested Newts. We're currently working on establishing a sustainable captive breeding population of colour morphs of the European common frog. The reasons for this are twofold. Firstly, for research purposes. Currently, very little is known about European common frog colour morphs, and nobody's really sure exactly how many variants or colour mutations exist in this species. We call this morph the golden albino, due to its similarity to the golden albino axolotl, which is very popular in the amphibian keeping hobby. Which brings us to the second reason that we are working with these colour morphs. Amphibian colour morphs make fascinating and beautiful captives. And species such as the Pac-Man frog and axolotl are already well established in the hobby with several colour morphs in existence. This second morph is what we refer to as a pink albino. Like the golden albino, the pink albino also produces no melanin. But the pink albino is unable to produce the golden pigment that both the golden albino and the wild type common frog produce. The result is a frog which seems to be lacking almost all pigment. The pink coloration is merely from the blood vessels underneath the skin. In fact, the skin of juvenile pink albinos is translucent and as froglets, their internal organs can be seen through the skin. This adult male is over two years old and as they mature, pink albinos do develop more yellow coloration possibly due to thickening of the skin and build-up of fats beneath. This third morph is a tyrosinase positive albino, or T plus albino for short. T plus albinos exist in many species of reptile and amphibian within the hobby. In the reptile world, the colour morph is often known as caramel, and in the axolotl it is known as copper. We were kindly given several of these young T plus albinos this year and we were referring to them as coppers but the chap that gave them to us has kept one for himself that is affectionately called mustard and we think that's a much more fitting name. Most of these froglets are very similar in appearance and quite well fit the name of mustard. However, there are a couple which are quite different in appearance. This fourth morph is a variant on the T plus albino. These are siblings to the mustard coloured frogs. As we move forward with establishing these morphs in the amphibian keeping hobby, we will be looking for some catchy names to call them by. Perhaps cherry or strawberry. The term strawberry is already used in the hobby for a variant of albino Pac-Man frog. Both the mustard and the red variants of the T plus albino have a dull red coloration to the eye. Although both have derived from the same genetic mutation, when viewed side by side, you can see that they are quite distinct morphs. Several other common frog morphs are occasionally seen in the wild. This one, spotted in Glasgow last year, was called the Iron Brew Frog by the media. Both the Iron Brew Frog and this specimen, which is quite similar, are quite distinct from the types of albino that we keep at UK Crested Newts. Particularly, the coloration of the eye is much paler. And this frog, shared on an online forum several years ago, is quite spectacular. Its coloration is quite reminiscent of that of an ornamental koi carp. And this specimen, sighted in a garden pond, may be the same type of colour morph. This bizarre frog was recorded on the online site iNaturalist. 
who knows what other European common frog colour morphs may be discovered in the future, and what may come from future captive breeding. Perhaps you've seen unusual coloured common frogs in the wild yourself. If you have, let us know about it in the comments. For regular updates on our Rana Temporaria Colour Morph project, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. And until next time, thank you for watching.